All right, well, by request, for those of you who have been watching my Great Sieges videos recently, I've got some comments, both on BoardGameGeek and on the channel, uh, for people to check out the third of these games, which is 414 BC, the Siege of Syracuse. And I'm only too happy to oblige. Um, if there's ever anything that you are interested in seeing on the channel that I own, um, I'm more than happy to play it if I can solo. And uh, obviously, this one, made to be played solo and also made to be played two players. Now... I just finished reading the rules to this, and this is by far the most involved of the Great Sieges uh, games, and I think I'm really, really going to enjoy this. So um, with that said, let's take a look at what we've got here. So it's a very similar looking map to what you may remember uh, from other games in the series. You've got the Syracusans here in this brown color. You've got the Athenians here in this gray color. You've got their units, you've got the different positions um, around the city of Syracuse, um, the morale track, and uh, you've got some positions down here, the Olympian and the Pimerian. So there are uh, a lot of locations that troops can move to. You've got ships here. We've got two Athenian ships starting in Lysimalaya, but you can also move to the uh, Great Harbor, and you can also move to a blockade position around the city. Ships can be damaged, and they go in this ship's damaged area. They can also then be repaired, and that repair actually increases your morale back. So when you lose a ship, it, it, when it damages, a ship is damaged, your morale goes down, and when a ship is repaired, your morale goes up. Interestingly, in this game, the starting conditions are asymmetrical. The Syracusans, who is the opponent in this game when you're playing solo, you can't play this one both sides. Unlike the other two games, you can only play this game from the side of the Athenians. Um, but the Syracusan morale starts at 8, whereas the Athenian morale starts at 10. Now, what's really interesting about this game is the victory objective. So you can see these wooden pieces here, these uh, like castle wall pieces, or I guess uh, siege wall pieces. Both sides have orders and effects that can cause these to be built. And what the Athenians are trying to accomplish here is to fully surround the city of Syracuse with their walls and so you have to build an order when you successfully build a wall you start basically at the one and then if you succeeded again you would go to the two and if you succeeded again you'd go to the three and so forth and so there's plenty of plenty of wall pieces that you can put in here you win the game as the athenians if you can successfully build the entirety of the wall around the city of syracuse and fully um, envelop it, which I think is really cool. It's not just like a, I mean, you can also win by morale as well, but that's sort of the main objective here, and I think that's pretty neat. Now, the Syracusans, for their part, the AI that's playing the Syracusans, or the second player if you're playing two-player, they're going to be trying to build counter wall segments, and when they do that, you're always going to have to go in order of the letter and then the number. So, the as you can see, it's kind of a race, right? Both sides are trying to race to build uh, these walls. So, if the Athenians here have built this first segment, and then the Syracusans are trying to build their segment, well, they would have to start here. But if they succeed again before the Athenians can build this second segment here, then you actually, they establish a counter wall. And that blocks the Athenian wall progress. And that forces the Athenians to have to attack these walls to try and destroy them. So there's this really interesting kind of interplay. There's a race going on where you're trying to build these walls and counter walls and then also trying to defeat the enemy as well. And obviously the Athenians are going to be able to use their ships, like I said, to come into a blockade position. That's going to have some effects on the orders. Um, and then what will happen is if the Athenians actually make it past this A segment, then the next walls that get built by the security are B, uh, Syracusans are B, and they're trying to get here, and so forth. And finally, there's a, a seawall segment here, and that's going to be sort of the final uh, race to the end. So a really interesting situation and some uh, a kind of a twist on, um, on the system that we've seen so far. Now, the other thing that I find really interesting about this are the cards. So we've got actually two decks in the game. So you can see there, the, the game is divided into two phases. There's a solitaire phase one, which is going to function very similar to um, the other Great Siege systems. And you're just going to you know, start drawing these cards, and there's plenty of events in there. What's interesting about this is that there are actually Athenian leaders that are going to be shuffled into this pile. And when you draw these leaders out as an event, they're going to come into your hand. And much like the uh, aggressive orders that you've seen in Quebec and... Um, Malta, uh, you're going to have these in your hand. And you can choose one to play these, and these are going to add some effects. So, for example, um, you know this guy, uh, Nikias, Wall of Fire, may only be played with Athenian build wall order, or um, building the wall in the plateau. So the map is actually um, separated into plateau and lowlands. But anyways, when you build um, a wall section, you then use this and you roll a dire and his results will in, uh, also apply in addition to your order. So you, it's possible that you can cause a, um, uh, if you roll badly here on a one, you can cause a counter wall to be built by the Syracusans or you can potentially build your own wall. And he looks like he's pretty good. 
Um, but like I said, there's four of these leaders in the in the phase one deck, and they all kind of do something different. I'm not going to spoil all of them because this playthrough is going to be my absolute first playthrough of the game, so we're going to discover it together. But they're all going to be shuffled into these events, and so you never know when you're going to get them, which I think is really cool. Now, the second part of this card deck is this phase two deck, and as you can see here, the phase two deck has the Spartan um, symbol on the back. And that's because you, you're, the second deck is going to function a lot like the first one, except that there's going to be two more Athenian leaders in here. You're going to get uh, Demosthenes and you're going to get Eurymedon and like I said they're going to get shuffled and you might draw them however this deck is going to be stacked with these two special events so the first event that's going to get stacked near the bottom is going to be the second, I believe it's the bottom, the second Athenian expedition. This is going to add a whole bunch of Athenian troops when it comes into play. It's going to add more boats, and you're going to add some morale to the Athenian army, which I think is really cool. You're also going to get the Spartan expedition, which of course the Spartans are, are fighting, they're allies of Syracuse, and they're fighting um, uh, the Athenians. When this comes up, you're going to add a bunch of Syracusan uh, markers to the board, and they're going to gain some morale. So there's some really interesting stuff as like more, more units pile in as they sail in from other parts of, um, of of, uh, uh, Greece and Italy, and um, and these these events are going to have sort of a, a chance to come up at a very specific time in the deck. So we're getting some fixed scripted narrative here, which I think is really cool, and I can't wait to see how this works in practice. Um, so that's the deck, deck of cards. That's the wall segments, and as you can see, this is a much different game than Quebec or um, or, or Malta. So um, I'm excited to get this started. I'm excited to see kind of how this plays out. I don't really have a grasp of the strategy. I'm gonna. I've looked over the orders a little bit. I kind of see the general objectives, but I'm I'm not quite certain that the order of what I'm going to be doing things is is or how efficiently I'm going to do them. So you're going to be learning along with me as I play. And uh, yeah, let's go. This is 414 BC, the siege of Syracuse from Worthington Games. Okay, so looking at my options um, about strategically what I'm trying to accomplish here and what my sort of opening moves are going to be. The, the, uh, the plateau area obviously is the second section of wall that needs to be built. There's not a lot of Syracusan units there right now, so I feel like that's going to take kind of a back seat. In the near term, I'm definitely going to want to get these wall sections up and built. Um, and I think that's the first thing. I'm also going to need to get these ships out into the harbor and potentially into the blockade positions. Remember, I need a couple there to win. I think I need two. Um, might only be one. Um, and uh, this peninsula here seems to be pretty important for some of the events that come out of the deck. So I'm going to probably want to move some of my Athenian units from the Lysimalia camp, Lysimalia camp, excuse me, to uh, the Plumerian. Um, so we're going to try and do we're going to try and do some move troops. We're going to try and do some move ships, and we're going to try and get some of these walls built. And I think I'm going to start by getting the walls built, or at least attempting to get the walls built. So let's see what we get. Um, we get Hermocrates redeploys troops, move one Syracuse troop from any and all areas that have a surplus to areas completely vacant. Okay, so uh, it looks like we're going to be moving troops everywhere. If Athens occupies a Pipoli, then the Syracuse surplus troops all fill any vacant Acrad Acradina slots first. Well, I don't have a Pipoli. So interestingly, this event is telling me that um, if I have units there, then I'm forced to move the uh, Syracusan units there. However, um, right now that is not the case. So it looks like um, move one. So it looks like we're going to probably pull some units here out of the city. We're going to send at least one there. We're going to send at least one um, up here. So that appears to be what the card is telling me to do. All right, now let's try and uh, uh, build some lowland walls. So they selected uh, defend the plateau. Defending the plateau looks pretty good for me. I cannot, here, here's, what, uh, here's what the chart looks like. I actually cannot fail to build a wall. The only question is whether or not they take casualties. I rolled a five. That means that is a casualty to the Syracusans and I get to build a wall. Uh, Syracusan losses are taking are taken from um, Neapolis or Temenites. So Neapolis is here, Temenites is here. Um, let's I guess I get to choose on this one. Let's take from uh, let's take from Temenites. So that's an elimination. That is this down, uh, and then I get to build a Athenian wall section here. So we've started the encirclement of the city. That would get me a morale normally, but uh, in this case. Um, it doesn't. Uh, I think the next thing I want to do is do that again to see if we can get this counter wall uh, segment blocked so the Syracusans can't sort of undermine our efforts. So yeah, let's build. Let's do another. Uh, let's do another build lowland wall order. Um, let's draw a card. What do we get? We get fire ships. Move one ship to Lysimalaya from blockade first, Great Harbor second. So uh, we actually don't have any ships out here. Or roll one die and apply the results. Okay, so we're gonna roll one die and apply the results. 
I rolled a four, that is minus one Athenian morale. So we've got some Syracuse and naval counterattacks happening. All right, they're defending the city and the harbor. That's gonna be a little bit tougher for us here. Looks like uh, we have a chance to take some losses um, on some of these results. I do like these tables. They're a little bit more attritional than the other games. And so there's kind of a, a give and take, sort of a positive negative. Uh, I rolled a six, which is really good. So we do one Syracusan hit. Uh, let's take it from the Temenides again, and we build another wall section. That's another another morale hit there. And we've successfully blocked off the uh, Syracusans' attempts, right, for at least for now, to counter wall build. So, um, so yeah, let's keep going. I mean, uh, there's no reason to stop now. We're doing pretty good. Actually, you know, I'm mm, yeah, no, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see what we can get out of this. Uh, next. More fire ships. So we don't ha we already have ships in Lysimalaya, so let's roll a die and see what happens. We rolled a four. That's going to be minus one Athenian morale. And again, they're defending the city and the harbor, so let's roll on the chart. We rolled a four, and a four is building a wall segment. So, oh, I'm sorry. The last wall segment I built, I believe, should have not put my morale up. And again, another wall segment that is also going to put my morale up. Um, yeah. Okay, so we've almost uh, halfway encircled the city already. We're doing pretty good. Um, you know, let's keep it going. No reason to stop. We're going to build build that final wall section, hopefully. Tellius's counterattack. Cancel the order issued or play the order as issued, then roll a die and apply the results below. Um, and they're defending the lowlands. And that's a pretty bad result for us because they could potentially build a counter wall and do a hit to us. So we're going to cancel that order. Uh, we're going to cancel... Cancel the wall build order. Um, let's try again. It's a siege after all. We got to keep going. We're going to try and build this final section. We really want to get that in there. Uh, Ekfontis' cavalry raids. If at least one Syracuse troop marker is in Olympiaeum, roll on the chart. Well, yes, they do have Olympiaeum. Uh, okay. They rolled a two. Remove one troop from Plumerium. If occupied, if vacant, remove from any space. So we do lose uh, an Athenian unit here. Cavalry raid, and then they are defending the lowlands. Defending the lowlands is again a really bad result for us here. So this is not probably going to go well. Uh, we roll. I rolled a four, um, and that's going to be one loss to the Athenians from either the Lysimalaya camp or Saika. Um, Saika is important because it allows us to it sort of affect both sides of the city. So unfortunately, we're going to take this loss from from Lysimalaya. So this isn't working too well for us. Let's uh, let's change tack here. Let's. Um, you know, we could do a rest and repair action, um, but we don't have any damaged ships. So let's try and let's try and move some ships. Let's let's move ships. Um, or you don't know, no, let's move troops. Let's get some troops down here to the Plumerian. Um, I think that makes the most sense right now. Let's try and move some troops. So Sicanus raids supply convoys. Roll and use a minus one DRM if no ships are in the Great Harbor. Okay, well that should be that would be a reason why you'd want to get ships out here. Um, and an additional minus one DRM if no troops in Plumerium. Well, there are not. So those are two very important locations for some of this uh, Syracusan naval uh, activity. So we're at a minus two die roll modifier. We rolled a four. That's a two. Convoy lost. Minus one Athens morale. So we can't get supplies in for the siege. So that hurts. Um, and they're building counter walls. So if we come over here and look at the uh, move ships, build counter walls, um, it looks like... We have a good chance of moving. However, they're probably going to build a counter wall. So uh, we don't get the plus one modifier because we don't have any Plumerian troops. Oh, so, excuse me. We're here. I was trying to move troops. Uh, so, yeah. All right. So let's roll the die. I got a six. Oh, that's great. So we actually they didn't actually get the counter wall built. I and I'm able to move those troops. So I can move one to three troops from one area to one other area. Um a good question uh it's dangerous it's dangerous to take all of the guys from here so i'm just gonna move and i'm not sure the implications of moving from there so let's take two of the units from the lysimalaya camp and bring them down here to the plumerium that is going to probably be helpful to us next let's get some ships in position so if i move ships um I will get a plus one on this because now that I have units here on this peninsula, I can get ships out to the harbor easier. Probably some um, some harassment happening of Syracuse and naval lines. Um, I believe I get a yeah, I get a plus one modifier and I can move up to two ships. So let's see what we get. 
Ag Agothercus raids supply convoys. Um, so we get a, a single minus one DRM. Hopefully we can roll a five here. That'd be great. We rolled a six. So convoy arrived plus one Athens morale. That's great. Um, so the the Athenian uh, our interdiction of Syracusan naval activity here uh, has actually let us um, get some supplies in. So that helps, raises the morale. That's great. Uh, and then they're doing defend the city and harbor. So we're moving ships. Uh, defending the city and harbor is actually the worst result for us. Uh, we need a five or a six here, but we do get a plus one because we have units uh, down in this area here. So let's roll. I rolled a two, so it's a minus one morale and a failed movement. Okay, let's try and move some more ships again. Command conflict. Cancel order or proceed with a minus one die roll modifier. They're doing defend the plateau. Now, don't forget, I get a plus one for having units down here, but then I'll get minus one from the card if I continue. Um, if they're defending the plateau, um, seems like I if I roll a one or a two, I will fail. Let's roll it. Let's go forth. I rolled a two and I failed. Um, okay, ships having a, a tough time getting going. Let's try one more time. Um, or should I just continue building the wall? Um, let's try one more time to move ships. Oh, I got a leader. Okay, cool. I got Lamachus. So he um, he can be played with an Athenian attack order, which I have not done yet because I have not really needed to destroy counter wall sections. Um, but as you can see, he adds uh, he adds some stuff, some potential losses to the. Um, to the uh, Syracusan. So I keep this in my hand, we'll keep it down here, and then I have to draw another card. I got another leader. I got uh, Euthydemus, Etruscan Shield Wall. So when I build walls, I can use him to get a plus one DRM and ignore any troop losses I might take. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I need to draw until I get an event. Command conflict, cancel order or proceed with order issue at minus one. Okay, um, they're on build counter walls. I'm moving ships here. So we're at a flat, we're, we're at a flat, uh, flat roll. Um, so they will build a counter wall here more than likely unless I roll a six. So I rolled a two. Uh, that is going to be a move, but a counter wall gets built. Um, I don't believe that increases their morale. Yeah, so I do get to move. So I'm gonna move two ships uh, from Lysimalaya. We're gonna move them out here to the, the Great Harbor. That's gonna be useful for us. Um, and then they're gonna build a counter wall. So uh, they start, they can't build A anymore. So they have to start with B. So they build their first segment here. So now it's a race to get to this spot. And of course, naturally what we're gonna do is try and build a wall there. Now I might use one of my leaders at this particular, um, I can get a plus one DRM. I have to make this decision before I draw the event. I'm definitely gonna build a lowland wall. The question is, is do I wanna use this leader? Um, or save him for the upper. Let, let's try one without using him and just see what happens. Uh, okay, Euclid's counterattack. Cancel the order issued or play order as issued, then roll a die. Well, we're gonna we're gonna play the issue as issued because defend plateau is 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 it gonna be a success for us? Uh, there's no reason it's not. So yeah, so uh, they're counterattacking here in the north uh, against our our I guess scouting forces um, while we're trying to build this final wall segment. But we do have to do this. Let's see what I get. Oops, let's roll it in the in the dice tray. I rolled a four. Minus one Athenian morale. Okay, so there's some counterattacks happening up here on the plateau. But rolling that four on uh, defend plateau is one hit to the Syracusans and a wall section built. And of course, when I build the wall section, we've got the southern part of the city fully encircled now. We do get a morale hit and I do do a hit to the Syracusans, let's uh, let's clear out the Temenites. And that's gonna lower their morale by one. All right, half the job is done. We've got uh, the south and southern half of the city encircled. They couldn't get a counter wall in place. Now we're gonna wanna start building here. And I am guessing that we're gonna wanna get some, some troops here in Epipoli. Um, I, I feel like that is probably going to be something important. Um, so. I've got a couple of leaders available. I've got some ships ready to move into uh, blockade positions. Um, yeah, and we'll continue on from there. I'll come back and let you know how it's going as uh, we continue the siege of, of Syracuse here in 414 BC. We're well underway, doing pretty good, I would say. Okay, well, we've had some developments here. So first of all, um, I started to try and build the plateau wall. 
we succeeded in getting the first segment up uh, as we drive here towards the uh, the far end, the northern side of the city of Syracuse. Um, I did realize that the units in Labdalum cannot be chosen as casualties as you're building these walls. So if there are ever casualties uh, forced to be taken by the Athenians, they would have had to come from Syca or Epipoli. And because I didn't have units in Epipoli, I decided to move down those forces from Labdalum down here. Uh, when we built this wall section, we did knock out the defenders in Acradina. And then we made it into uh, the second uh, section of the event deck, and we got a new leader. We got Eurymedon, who uh, he uses the Parapluis, which is a naval maneuver. And this can actually cancel a, a trireme attack by the Syracusans or potentially um, help out with moving ships. Now, right after that, we got the Spartan Expedition. So this is one of those stacked cards that's always going to come up in the game. This one adds six Syracuse units to vacant Eurelius and Olympiaeum uh, are Acradina and other spaces in that order. So uh, no one, let's see, Eurelaus, this is the Olympian. Eurelaus is there. So we're adding six Syracusan units. So two of those units are going to go here, reinforcing here inland. Uh, and then we're going to add four to Acradina, uh, which is hugely important, uh, I think, for the... Um, for the Syracusan side. Uh, that's a lot more units. And then add plus three to the Syracusan morale. So just like that, here come the Spartans and they have bolstered the defense of, uh, of the city. Now uh, they chose defend plateau. We're gonna be trying to build the plateau wall, uh, which is not good. <laughs> uh, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, we rolled a two. Okay, that's not great. Um, so they build a counter wall segment and we lose uh, one unit. So this counter wall segment thankfully is longer because they've got to build it from this part of the city out. So not the end of the world, but we do lose a unit. I could take it from Saika if I want, but I get the feeling that I'm going to want to probably move these units from Saika. And for the first time, the Athenian morale is flagging to such a degree uh, that the Syracusans sense victory. Um, oh, we also had a, a ship return here uh, from the Great Harbor that uh, a Syracusan naval attack made. Uh, so now, <laughs> now it gets interesting. Um, I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I think we're going to try and build another counter wall segment here. Let's do that. Uh, Gilipos redeploys troops, move a Syracuse troops uh, from any areas that have a surplus to areas that don't have any. There are none of those. Um, if we occupy Epipoli, then they must fill Acredina slots first. Um, but they're not going to fill those because they just got some Spartan reinforcements. So this is nothing's going to happen here. And then they're defending the lowlands, which uh, is good for us because when they defend the lowlands and we build a plateau wall, we're going to automatically succeed and potentially do a loss. Let's see what we get. We rolled a four. That's going to do a loss to the Syracusans. Um, so Acredina or Temenites. Got a unit here. Let's, uh, let's remove from Acredina. So that's going to lower the morale back down. And then we are going to get... A wall segment and that's going to raise our morale so here we go we're closing in um, I feel as though I am doing okay the Athenian forces pool is pretty small um, we've only got two units in each of our exterior locations and then Psyche obviously the three starting units I'm noticing that this game is much more about uh, conserving your manpower the resource that the Athenians have is not the success of the siege. It's more about, do I have enough Athenian units to achieve what I'm trying to accomplish? Um, and that seems to be the real tension here. Um, I still do have three leaders in place, so we're about to see um, them probably help me get to where I need to be. Um, but uh, I'll take a break there, and I'll come back and show you after a couple more card plays. We're getting down kind of the bottom of the deck, but I, do, I am expecting some Athenian reinforcements here, so... Okay, so uh, we've had a couple more cards. We've successfully built the third wall section. Um, we did take some losses uh, here from Saika uh, from an attack. We did uh, have some naval issues. We did draw another leader, which is Demosthenes. Um, our use of um, Euthydemus did not go well. I did make one mistake, and it's a fairly significant one. You don't get a morale every time you build a wall segment. You only get a morale when you build the final wall segment. So I gave myself four extra morale when I should have only gotten one extra morale. So I've lowered it by three for that and I did the same up here that actually puts us in a very tenuous position here <laughs> with only one morale left um which is not great <laughs> um I did not realize I was so close to losing but I'm also so close to winning as you can see I just need to build that last wall segment the uh the Syracusans built another section there we're, we're so close we're so close I just can't take any more losses I'm trying to figure out if there's a way I I'm expecting reinforcements one of these cards that's left in this deck is an Athenian reinforcement card that's going to raise my morale. I just don't know if it's going to arrive in time, which I think is very thematic for this siege. Um, 
you know, I could do a rest and repair. Um, that might be probably the best, um, the best here. So if you look at rest and repair, you're always, you're going to get a morale and then you can repair a ship. But even if you don't, uh, d um, have a damaged ship, uh, you do, will increase your morale by one. Um, but there's also a chance that the Syracusans use that time for your rest to build, uh, a build a counter wall, depending on the order. So I might just because of where I am, might do a rest and repair. So we'll do that. We'll draw the card. Cyanus' reinforced triremes attack. Move one ship to Lysimalaya. That would be from here, from the Great Harbor. Or roll a die with minus one DRM, and we could potentially suffer morale loss here. Um, however, Paraplus Maneuver, I can cancel the reinforced triremes attack. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my leader here to repel this Syracusan uh, naval assault. So that's going to counter that. Build counter walls is the order. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what I was hoping for there. Um, I need a four through six for this to be any good. I rolled a one, so that's another counter wall section for the Syracusans. Sorry about the focus. That's going to put that there. So now it's a race to that final corner. Can we get it done? Um, I feel like I need to do another rest just because of where I'm at here. So we're going to do another rest. Hopefully, if I rest long enough, my reinforcements will show up. Aha! There they are. Uh, second Athenian expedition. So we get six Athenian troop markers to vacant, um, which is fantastic. I needed that. Um, so starting with uh, Lysa Malaya here. So four of them are going to go here. That is a huge, huge boon to me. Um, and then uh, Labdulum, which is up there. So two more are going to go here in this particular segment. Then we get to add one more Athenian ship here. So now we've got three total ships in operation, and we add three to our morale, which is hugely important, um, hugely important as we make our final final push to encircle the city. So um, this, these are both attack uh, leaders that are going to help me on the attack, which I don't really need right now unless the Syracusans end up building that wall. But we are running out of time to complete the siege, so I'm going to try once again to build that wall section. We'll see what we get. We get Soothsayers Predict Doom. Your move troops or move ships order this turn cannot be played. Well, I didn't do that. And they're defending the lowlands with this one, which is hugely consequential because as we build this final plateau wall, you can see that defend lowlands is automatically going to get us that wall, potentially with a casualty. No casualty, but we do build the wall segment uh, here. And that, when you complete number eight, is when you get your morale, not for every wall section. So we move back up here. The Athenians, jubilant as reinforcements arrive, as we fully encircled the land part of the city here um, against the Syracusans. And we've got enough ships now to get into the blockade area. Uh, I need to check how many ships I need to get there. But if we can do that in the cards remaining, of which there are four, uh, we will win the game. Okay, so you just need one ship in the blockade area. To, uh, to win once you've surrounded the city. I have done that. So, let's do it. Let's move ships. Let's see what we get. Bad weather. Probably not going to be able to move ships. <laughs> uh, all right, four through six, we get mud. Let's hope for that. Let's hope for the four through six. We did not. We got uh, storms, so no ships are moving. So there's a wasted turn. Uh, let's try moving ships again. Ooh, running out of time here. Gilipos counterattacks. Cancel the order issue or play order as issued, then roll below. Um, all right, we're gonna play. Uh, we're gonna play the order. So let's see. One through five, we're gonna lose. Okay, we rolled a two, so we remove a troop from the plumerium. So as you can see, this is how uh, the this is how the um, Syracusans kind of limit your naval movement. So we've lost the unit there. But they're defending the plateau, and under move ships, defending the plateau is a pretty good result here. And we do get a plus one modifier, so I can't actually take the morale hit. The worst I can do is um, is do a fail, and that's only if I roll a one, because we still have units uh, down here in this section. So, yeah, we have one ship in the Great Harbor right now. We just need to move it to the blockade space, and that would be a success. And I rolled a four. That's going to allow this naval unit here to move to the blockade space. We have successfully surrounded Syracuse here. And the Athenians, uh, against, against history, have, have succeeded in this operation. 
Um, they've defeated the city of Syracuse here with a full siege. It was really close here at the end. You can see this race to that final corner over there. Um, and despite my mistakes with the morale, I never actually dipped below one. So while the Athenians won with lower morale and the Syracusans were very confident in their victory, the timely arrival of the second expedition from Athens really saved the day here. That, that got my morale up uh, in a way that uh, allowed me to make these final moves. And I had to, I did it without even using Lamachus or Demosthenes. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, a very different feeling game uh, than the other Great Sieges titles. Uh, it's, it's more of a race. The resources uh, here are much less about morale. It's a lot easier to raise your morale, specifically with this uh, rest and repair order, uh, because you can, you know, at any time you're dip low, you can give up time to the to the Syracusans to recover your morale, which is interesting. Um, it staves off the auto loss by bad luck. Uh, in general, I think there, you can do more here to mitigate some of the bad luck. I also think the morale chart is not as important. I think it's very difficult, probably, to win a victory by morale in this game, and, and possibly to lose a game via morale if you're playing solo as the Athenians. Um, so I like that a lot. You know, there's still a tension here because you got to be careful. You can't just throw away manpower. But um, the the real trick in the game is to outlast time. And for a siege that's about sort of circumvallating uh, a, a city, uh, circumvallating, is that a word? Um, <laughs> putting up lines of circumvallation around a city, uh, it feels a lot more thematic in that way. I think this is doing some really clever things, um, most notably with the leaders being in the decks with the decks being stacked with specific events you know are going to happen, but are not quite sure when they're going to happen. Um, I think that really lends a very thematic feel, more so than the other games, as you're trying to besiege the city and construct sort of a perimeter around it. Um, I, I think it's very cool. I also like the idea, because the deck is variable based on the difficulty you're playing, you actually may, there's a chance you may get very few leaders, or you may get all your leaders and very few events. Um, now, the upside to more leaders is that you're more powerful. The downside being, obviously, that you're drawing more cards in a turn, so the, the siege happens quicker. Um, and so the variability here with the number of events you're playing with, the way the decks are stacked, the number of leaders you may or may not get, uh, super interesting, super interesting, very clever, and shows how this system can be taken and applied to a very different conflict. I love the fact that we've got an Ancients era siege game. There's not many of those, especially recently. Um, and this, I, I would say after this first play, probably helps because I won, but the feel of this game is my favorite of the three. Um, I think for from a challenge perspective, I think the Malta Siege is probably the most challenging, playing as the Turks. Um, but the downside, the only real downside to this game is that you can't play both sides. You cannot play the Syracusans uh, solo. You can only play Syracusans if you're playing two-player. And I'm very keen to play this two-player to see how it kind of changes. There's a lot of interesting stuff happening here. Um, the Syracusans are going to have more agency uh, when they're being played by a player than by the Athenians uh, just by themselves and an encounter deck. Um, but yeah, I, I think this one has a lot of advantages. I think if, uh, if you could only pick one game from this series, I think it really depends on the subject matter you're into, but I think that the two choices would either be this, the Siege of Syracuse, or uh, Quebec 1759 or 1759 Siege of Quebec. just really depends on what your um, subject matter that you're more interested in is. Uh, but the gameplay in this one, I think, is the most interesting. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Um, I'm, thank you so much for uh, re requesting that I do a playthrough of this. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, I probably will play this again because this is really fun. Um, there's a lot of interesting uh, fog of war in this one, and that kind of affects your decision-making space. And, um, and yeah, the race against time, it, it really is brings out the flavor of this siege. So uh, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope to see you in the next one.